look, I think the job trainer in theory, it, it's actually a reasonable attempt. It is focused for people under 24. So from a young person's perspective, it's a lot that has been invested, $506 million over only two years. So that's a huge, huge investment realistically compared to what we, at least compared to what we're seeing in other areas. Then that's further supported the home builder. You've got $774 million over the next two years for the home builder, which that's further allowing people to make basically get home loans at two and five percent probably the biggest issue that's then you're seeing here one I don't know many job training potentially a couple of TAFE degrees that go for two years so that's awesome so it is a very short-term fix and it's just throwing a lot of money in at basically one school group you're looking at one grade of students it just seems really that sense that you're basically shoving 506 million dollars at you know year 12s or people 21 years old i i haven't even got my full license yet and that's putting a lot of money in for a very small amount of people that are actually going to benefit from benefit from that which yeah. seems really it doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing but it's odd and it doesn't seem well thought out and then the home builder as well difficulty here is when you have something set up for young people that seems to give a head start. There always seems to be a catch. And historically, we always see this catch on the end. And I guess I kind of have some worries and hesitations about what is actually going to be the benefit of this home builder. What is the security that it's offering people when you can get a home loan for as low as, or deposits for as low as 2% and home loans for as low as 5%. There, That is a lot of money that particularly young people and young families are going to debt over. And I just don't know what's been set up as the precautions around that when those can't be repaid because your tax cuts get stopped and sure. like all those sorts of things happen in yeah. maximum four years' time. So it seems yeah. fantastic right now, but the long-term benefits of it just seem really, really precarious. And I don't know whether that's been set up appropriately. This is, think- this is something that we see time and time again though especially in the housing market so we seem to reach for demand side solutions to the housing market and we keep reaching for demand side solutions first home buyers grant changes to stamp duty the allowing you to say within your super these things are demand side and demand is actually not the problem. <laughs> Demand is well and truly there. It's We're seeing auction clearance rates that are through the roof. We're seeing prices well above reserve. That's not the issue. The issue with housing in Australia is supply. It has been for a long, long time. But supply and addressing the supply issues has the unfortunate outcome of reducing house prices. And we don't like reducing house prices because people like their house price to go up because it makes them feel wealthy and it gives them confidence to spend money. And if house prices start going down or plateauing, that causes all sorts of problems. But mm-hmm. we're we're throwing a demand side solutions at a supply side problem. And it, it then leads into, we should have seen something in this budget for social housing. You know, we have hundreds of thousands of places in social housing short. In Australia, we need a lot of social housing. We need a lot of low rent or low income housing. We've got people living on the streets due to the lack of those things. We have nothing in this budget to address the fact that middle-aged women, women over 50 are the fastest growing group of homelessness in the country. There's, There's none of that kind of stuff. And instead, we've got these weird single mothers can buy a house on a 2% deposit as those single mothers are, are saving money in the first place. It's just absurd, but it's it's story time. It's, it's a nice narrative, like the, you know, doubling the amount of money that people over 60 can contribute when they downsize their home. In their sunset years, people can downsize their home, the empty nesters, They can downsize their home, they can move somewhere smaller in a coastal paradise, and they can move now $600,000 at the age of 60 into their superannuation savings, which the government estimates will cost them exactly zero because nobody does it. It's a great story, though. It's a beautiful narrative. Like oh, yeah. Just me talking about sunset on the beach and a coastal home, you know, empty nesters, all of that kind of stuff. It's a complete fairy tale. Mm. 
it won't it won't cost the government anything. Just like the two percent for single mums to buy a home isn't going to cost mm. the government anything because there won't be any. Even if single mothers were to take it up, they're estimating that only ten thousand single parents are going to be able to take advantage of it because the majority of single parents rely on government support. I don't like understand it, the mental image they have of single parents. No. I yeah. don't I don't think they have a good understanding of what it means to be a single parent in this country. No. I just don't think they get it. And and this is the, another thread that I want to tug on is there's that so much of the initiatives in this budget, on the one hand, the headline thingy sounds great. We're going to help single parents buy a house. Cool. But the slightest bit of scrutiny, and you suddenly realise that, I mean, we, we sort of joked before about the Liberal Party's women problem, but it, it's actually, like, it's really real. They do not understand the lived experience of women in this country. And these policies yeah. are, it, it's almost its almost like you know, an alien drawing a dog once you've described what the dog looks like. And... It looks, you know, the, the end result looks nothing like an actual dog because they just have no reference point, if that makes sense. Mm. It, it's really revealing how as much as I think they're fixing their lady problem with this budget, it's really revealing how out of touch they are with what's actually important or useful to their, you know, the supposed target audience. Yeah, they're way off. I say that and I sit here as, you know, like a 50-year-old white guy. So take take everything with a grain of salt at the moment. But I, I can absolutely guarantee you that no one responsible for this budget has sat down and spoken to a single parent in the last 12 months, 18 no. months, you know, two years kind of thing. They They just cannot have. I can't imagine that they've spoken to someone who is reliant on the National Disability Insurance Scheme. I can't believe that they've spoken to people who are in aged care homes. Um, it, it just doesn't seem to be possible that you could come up with this budget, which is all veneer and no substance, um, having had any kind of substantive engagement with the people on the receiving end of these policies. They're mm. completely unfit for purpose.